with Sinovac, uh, there are no side effects. So I believe that up until today, I still have no um, feel, uh, have no like such feeling that I'm feeling feverish or anything. I'm just feeling hungry like most of the times. I'm not sure if that's a side effect, but I hope um, everything is going to be alright. I got my first dose of uh, AZ on the 30th of June. And uh, one of the funny things that happened was that when I was there, when I was about to receive my jab, uh, the, my jab, I actually asked the, I actually asked this, I said, Hi, Ka, uh, lima mil eh. Uh, I, I was thinking that uh, it would be 5 milliliter. Then <laughs> the kakak said 5 milliliter is for 10 persons. One person is for, it's only uh, 0 0.5. So it's like, oh, okay, okay. Uh, his, uh, then she said, kalau lima mil nanti you pengsan. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I made that, that, that I was confused. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Did you get any side effects after hand? Oh, yeah. Uh, fever and then um, I was very tired. But uh, the side effects only kicked in after, uh, 24 hours after my jab. So the next, I, I took it on 7.30 uh, p.m. So the next day, the entire morning, day, during the daytime, I was fine. So, I mean, I think that, I mean, if you just were to look at the numbers in general, yes, I guess the vaccine is really safe because even for, there, are, there have been situations where, of course, like the whole blood clotting thing and where people have had terrible side effects, but usually those are not like, specifically related to the vaccine itself is more because they have certain pre-existing conditions that let that to happen. I think quite safe, but the Pfizer also, like the Japanese, they say the Pfizer is come from America, right? America. So the dosage may be more suitable for American, not for Asian. Not to say I think that it's safe, but I think everyone should get it. Well, I think my my view is that um, I respect them. I, I, I believe it, bo it all boils down to personal choice, right? Whether you want to take the vaccine or not. So um, I wouldn't say I would sort of show any form of hatred or disrespect towards those who don't want to take the vaccine. But of course, we're talking about personal opinion here. So no disrespect from a personal viewpoint, but whether or not that is good for the entire country, I think that's a different story. But yeah, I would respect them now. That is their choice. So I personally feel like, you know, the law enforcement is actually quite essential in this role. I mean, the government, they actually plays a lot of an important role in this. And they actually need to come up with a lot of rules to say that if there's someone who is spreading the news, fake news around, then there should be, there's something like punishment for that. But apart from government, I think that, I think that the citizens of Malaysia actually plays another essential because this is quite like a joint effort and for those i mean if you find something that if i mean if you find someone who's spreading a false rumors you should actually report it to all those authorities report it to the platform so that they can actually take action and like currently people are coming with too much agenda in this world so i believe like people just think that oh everything is so suspicious right even like you can be like an alien or something just for taking vaccines, right? So I think these people have to be educated properly. From what I've read on certain articles regarding this idea of a mandatory vaccination policy, it would actually boil down to the definition of mandatory. Do you, do you like, does this, would the state intend to override consent or would the state aim to lawfully coerce consent because if the state overrides consent like for example i say i don't want vaccination but then they tie me down and they force the vaccine yeah maybe that is possibly going to be a lot of issues but in the alternative where they say that okay you can refuse vaccination but you can't exactly go out to these places anymore it's like what's the word for it carrot and stick i think that's the thing where they they threaten you, but they also give you an incentive to agree. I think it's, for me, I don't believe in overriding consent because at the end of the day, it is eventually individual choice. But if it goes the path where the state 
threatens punishment in the sense that if you don't consent, fine, but you'll be fined 500 ringgit. I don't mind with that because for me, each choice carries consequences. And because it's a public health crisis, if you refuse, fine, but you have to pay your consequences then because your actions threatens others as well. Yeah, that's just my intake, my put input on this. I think we actually don't have that issue of, uh, I think the issue of vaccine hesitancy isn't that big in Malaysia because uh, if I'm not mistaken, we actually hit 75% of the targeted population uh, to re we actually have 75% at least of the targeted population to register for the vaccine. The, if there is any hesitancy, I think it is more towards a particular vaccine. Uh, I've seen people sharing their story or their views about, for example, Sinovac or AZ, because uh, obviously for AZ it's a blood clot issue, and for Sinovac is because uh, some of them will say that the data isn't, it is just not transparent enough. So I think in that regard, instead of forcing down their throat the vaccines, it would be better to actually let them know, to be more transparent in a sense. People are not, I think uh, generally they're not, it's not that they don't want, they just want to know more about what they are going to receive. I think it should be mandatory because recent research and news shows that um, the COVID virus will mutate every time it transfers from a person to person. So if there's a group of pers a group of person having haven't vaccinated or the anti vaccine, so the virus will become mutation. So the vaccination current current vaccination will become useless already if the virus mutate to a more serious virus. Yeah. So I think it's it is a it is a social responsible for everyone to get vaccinated. Um, hi. Um, in my opinion, I think it is very unsatisfactory because first of all the. Um, the people who receive the vaccination are not given the right to know what types of vaccine they are receiving because according to research, right, each type of vaccine actually have different side effects and it's actually um, suitable, for uh, suitable for different types of people. So I think in my opinion, right, the government should actually let the people know and also if possible, let the people choose the type of vaccine that they get. So And then the second thing is the progress is very slow to get the uh, vaccination appointment date. So I think the government should also speed up in regards to this issue to let the um, people to have a early appointment date so that they know how to like arrange that time so that they, are, they will not be in a rush when they get the vaccination appointment. The other downside to that is, you know, how they let people to compete to get the vaccination slot, I find that very funny because it, you can, it is almost obvious that young people are the main group that is going to have access to internet. But what we, ha we need right now is to prioritize the older generation to get vaccines first. So it doesn't really make sense to let young people to queue up and get a prioritized queue in terms of vaccination and to let the older generation die and, you know, go to hospitals like that. If you just talk about the numbers that are vaccinated, in terms of numbers, well, we are not where we should be, but I think that at least we are improving compared to what the situation was like two or three months back. So that has improved, definitely. That, that's great. And even, I mean, I'm from Negri Simlan, so Negri Simlan has been really terrible, you know, the COVID situation. And even my parents couldn't get their COVID vaccine still very recently. So seeing that being amped up, uh, is, it's definitely promising news. Um, but in terms of the i guess the speed of things it's still not really there because it, i mean i know that malaysia is not a developed developed country yet but at the same time um given how high our covid rates are i think that the only way out of this is through vaccines i think our policy will probably be like very much like the uk where we're just gonna have to learn to live with it i highly doubt that covid cases will go to a point where it becomes zero i think if you have to wait for that to happen you're going to be in lockdown for another year. Speed manner, right, is really slow. And in regards to the vaccination appointment, they actually does not have, not really in an efficient manner, I gotta say, because some, I heard from some of my friends, they say that they received the vaccination, the vaccination appointment today and tell them that they have to go to the 
center for tomorrow. So it's not really that efficient, I gotta say. And in and it's too sudden because what if you have something to do tomorrow and suddenly you have to cancel your, all of your plans just to go for the vaccination. So I think that it is not really satisfactory for now. But I do think that there's still some progress to improve. So it depends on our governments, I gotta say. But at first, it felt a bit odd to comment about these things because like, we know that the government is having like a hard time acquiring vaccines in the early phases, right? But then it just really it like dawns on me like, wait, if we if we have the current supply, for example, like two million doses of AstraZeneca, then we can't exactly blame the vaccine suppliers anymore. Like the other day during the sec the third registration of AstraZeneca, where it was open for everyone. So I was a bit pissed off <laughs> because like imagine you're trying to register for like thirtieth of June, twenty twenty one. You click on the state and next thing you know nothing's going to happen <laughs> it's everything's just frozen everything is just constantly loading reloading like at one point you'll see green slots everywhere but in reality it's all full i feel like i understand that it's tough in the administration but i just feel like it could have been done better on certain aspects because i'm pretty sure at some point people just gave up on trying to register for astrazeneca and i think the government picked up on it so they just closed it and made it mandatory they just made everyone go through my sejatra. And even then, on my sejatra, I was a bit unhappy because my parents, um, for example, my mom, she got her vaccination not through the government, but through her private hospital because she's a, um, what's that? A dialysis patient. So if we lose the my sejatra, I'm pretty sure it would be at least one or two months before she got vaccinated. And there's a risk because she has to go for dialysis. She's exposed on at least three times a week. To, the ex to people from the outside. So yeah, it's just that, yeah, we should have actually prioritized the elder, elderly people first. But even, I think, even if we did prioritize with the current standard of administration, it wouldn't have worked out that well. I will compare it with Singapore. Singapore, because I live in at uh, Johor. So you can see from the TV channel of Singapore, they advertise uh, for different language to encourage the elder to take receipt. Their minister will talk in different language. Um, maybe, for example, Hokkien, Hokkien or Hakka. They, they encourage the elder elder person to take vaccine. Then they also encourage, they don't have the like our, our My Sejahtera apps because we don't expect everyone got um, phone handphone, right? They introduce a tech device so you can scan on a QR code, and uh, that is sponsored by sponsored by their government. And their government also give every household oximeter for every household. So this cannot compare. I think we cannot compare with Singapore. And also, our government need to wait until the situation already become very serious. Okay like Taiwan or uh, Singapore, Australia, they will lock, they do full, full lockdown when the case not over like three, three figures, not over 1,000 cases. We, we wait until 10,000 10, 10, cases only do full lockdown, which, which is too late.